We're here with Yves Detray, trimmer at Alinghi Red Bull Racing. The day three of this trip in Jeddah, today was in the upper end of the wind range compared to the previous two days. How did it go? It was definitely uh, a change of, uh, of conditions. Uh, it was actually quite fun. You know, we had two uh, light days and uh, it's nice to sit in, in light conditions, but it's uh, definitely a lot more fun when it, you get the speed and, uh, and uh, challenging uh, conditions. What wind speeds were you seeing? What was your boat speed, max speed? Uh, I think we were setting 40 knots and uh, we, we've seen um, 16, 18 at max, but uh, a lot of uh, sea state. We saw some FCS testing in the morning. Initially, it looked like the other boat was less consistent upwind and through the maneuvers. Is the flight control system still identical on the two boats? Yeah, actually, we, we just had a little bit of an issue with the uh, with the can system so we just wanted to make sure uh, it was working properly the guys on the on the rib were uh, checking that remotely uh, so that's what we were trying out and we didn't have any uh, issue after 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 that so uh, problem solved yeah you stopped a few times on the red boat the 41 is, is that what you were dealing with was there anything else going on no nothing else just a uh, run-up check because we we did add uh, some uh, funny uh, board drop you finished the day with some great racing. Some of the, we were just talking before, you know, there was less than 10 seconds between the two boats at the windward mark. How far have you come since you started the two boat program? Oh, I, think, I think a long way, obviously, uh, that's what we're here for, you know, a uh, lot of uh, match racing, a lot of racing. And uh, because we, we're learning as a group and, uh, you know, the entire team gets stronger and uh, so the race gets, uh, gets tighter. And I think today was a good, a good example. Uh, the, maneuver, the, the maneuvers on the AC40s are very sharp compared to what you perform on the 75s. Uh, what can you learn from the pre-starts on these boats that you can take into the 75s? Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, it's uh, the big bus, uh, like we like to call it. It's, uh, it's a lot different. Obviously, the, the regs are not exactly the same. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think, I think it's, we, we, you don't need to repeat exactly what you learn from here or from, from the big boat. Uh, you just have to uh, adapt yourself for, for a different boat, and that's, that's the key. And what's the most difficult part of your role in the pre-start? Yeah, I think it's uh, keeping the boat uh, up, on the, up on the fall all the time. I think even if we are trying to do maneuvers with uh, two boats down, it's still uh, very tricky and challenging to keep the boat always on the foil. And as you saw, we had some crashes during pre-start, and uh, fortunately we didn't have to get back on the foil quickly. But that's definitely uh, challenging. Obviously, uh, then it's all about uh, getting uh, off the line. Uh, you know, have a clean start and uh, ahead of the other, and, and then uh, manage the race course. So, is it just about keeping the boat level using the travel? I'm guessing. Are you playing with any other controls in the pre-start in these kind of conditions? I mean, every everybody's playing with uh, with their settings. You know, it's all about. Uh, the can settings, the sheet, jeep sheet, main sheets, you know, how tall, uh, traveler, it's not all about the traveler, there's a lot of settings on this boat, you know, the right height as well. So everyone is uh, playing hard on their settings to keep the boat up, up on the foil. Is it easier, to, when we're talking about the AC75, when you've got to fly the boat yourself, is it easier to have one person on flight control the whole time during the, during the pre-start? Uh, <laughs> it's... Uh, I wouldn't say uh, flying a boat is uh, it's easy. It's uh, definitely uh, challenging to fly a boat, and uh, even another pilot is struggling sometimes. So uh, no, it's uh, it's a work we we still have to uh, do for in the next uh, next couple of months uh, because obviously our new boat will come, and uh, we will have to learn how to fly this boat.
We're here with Ollie Bampton, handles, chase boat driver, and grease monkey at Lingi Red Bull Racing. So you're paired with the red boat, the 41, helmed by Dean and Phil. They capsized the boat quite spectacularly in a mock rounding today. What happened there? Uh, well, from the outside, it looked almost like they hit a jellyfish with the rudder. Um, no, I'm not really sure. It um, looks like we've lost the rudder somehow. And uh, yeah, just did a bit of a pitch pole, um, but quickly recovered it and got the boat back sailing. What, is it, what does the recovery look like from, from your perspective? What, uh, what do you have to do? So from my perspective on the chase boat is uh, our, the chase boat that supports each uh, yacht doesn't actually right the boat. We have another chase here. Uh, another asset so they as they're writing the vessel we're just on standby to uh, pick up any of the pieces or people that need help and then once the boat's upright we're alongside and uh, straight into checks just so we can get the yacht back up and running back out sailing. So who have you got on your boat and what are their roles? Uh, we've got a lot of uh, the technical crew on board uh, as well as the medic so um, our boat is yeah mainly with Rodney, Salty, uh, so we got someone from rigs and sails, uh, coach as you like, uh, electronics, hydraulics, um, and then a spare sailor normally. Is that is that is that uh, the crew equivalent on the other chase boat as well? For the, uh, the, the chase boat crews are fairly similar, yes. And how close do you have to be to the sailing yacht to, to maintain communications? Uh, the comms the comms these days are pretty good. Uh, we've got a a very decent range on them, um, but it's good to stay close. So you know, if we are ever needed, we can just go straight alongside and straight into help. You know, there's no delay, so we can get on top of stuff as quickly as possible. What sort of data are the guys on board looking at? Uh, all sorts of data. You know, we're looking at um, all sorts of uh, information from the yacht and uh, different aspects of the sailing day. Does any of the data coming off the boat get fed live directly back to the base in Barcelona? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no, but I'm not sure. You had a safety briefing this morning on the dock. Yes. Everyone involved goes yeah. on, the, everyone with the technical crew on the, on the chase boat. What were you talking about? Uh, that was more just a, a, a medical and safety kind of training, yeah. So just how we would uh, deal with injuries and evacuations on the chase boat. Uh, trying to, you know, just stay sharp and uh, be prepared for any kind of, you know, it's not, not the safest sport, it's not the most dangerous sport, but uh, we just want to be ready for any situation. We're here with Nico Charbonnier from Olingi Red Bull Racing. So you've been in the trimming seat this week, as well as the last few sailing days on Boat Zero. Why the change in, uh, why the change in position? Will you go back to helming? I think uh, we need to be prepared for anything. So I'm uh, helming a little bit, trimming a little bit. And uh, in uh, the two pre-regattas, I wasn't on board. So just everyone needs to be ready and we'll find the best configuration. Does that mean the helms are practicing trimming on the simulator and the trimmers are practicing helming? Yes, a little bit, more or less a few people are changing roles, but uh, yes, we keeping our options open and we, we will see how it develops. So today was an early, an early start, uh, you, ro you rolled out at 7 o'clock, but you had an issue with the rudder on, on the 41, on the red boat, uh, what was the problem? Actually, the uh, uh, first... Um, was a little leak of oil, but uh, we didn't go sailing, not because of that, but because the wind didn't uh, pick up as expected, and then we had the second option of going in the afternoon, but 
was there just a little oil leak. Yeah, the Dakar was delayed till 1.30. What happened with the wind today? Can you, it was up and down. Yeah, it was supposed to, to be totally different, uh, quite windy this morning, about uh, 10 to 15 knots from uh, the shore, but never happened. So we had a really light uh, wind coming in the afternoon, uh, six to nine knots, and uh, we got the most of it and was really still interesting for us, and tomorrow should be really windy. So you started with the J2, and after 10 minutes of sailing, you stopped to adjust, to adjust the, the baton tension did you tighten or loosen them? I think we tightened them. What are you trying to achieve with the sail shape, especially uh, at the top? Yeah, it's too complicated <laughs> to explain, but now it just also, like, the designer are making the best sails they can, and we, we need to make sure the trimming of the sail that includes the button tension is uh, good for it. So it just, like, we were not exactly where we wanted to be, and we just had to adjust it. And how do you know how much to tighten or how much to loosen? Have you I got just, markers? No, it's more like the, the shape of the cells and the wrinkles it can make if it's uh, too loose. So it was a little wrinkly, so we had just to tighten it a little bit and it was much better. I'm not sure if you remember, but in, uh, in start two, you luffed up the other boat, but then you got rolled and fell off the foils. Did, you get the pen did they get the penalty? Uh, the penalty uh, judgment is... Uh, at night or the next day, so I can't tell you right now. But in my opinion, we give them a penalty and uh, they will probably say the opposite. But no, we'll, so we'll know tomorrow after looking at the footage and uh, have a better, like a neutral opinion. Thank you.